I've been flirting with disaster in an empty fuel tank. I'm Jason from Melbourne, Australia. Good mythical morning. Good mythical morning. Today's episode is brought to you by Catula's, the guys with the goods. Goods like the doggy fountain. This is a fountain that you set up in your yard that your canine friend or pet can go up to, press on a little thing, and get himself some water. Or I could get some water. Yes, you could. Check it out at Catula's.com. The link is in the description, and the link is right here to share something with us. Hello, hello. Running out of gas, you people in the comfort of your viewing area at the mythical time of day that you happen to be watching this that may or may not be the morning, but it's the mythical morning whenever you're watching it hmm. because that's how it goes. Wow. Have you ever been driving a vehicular vehicle and ran out of gas? Is that's, it, that's what I'd like to talk about today. Is it today. ran or run out of gas? What's the correct? Have, Have you, you ever, ever run, run out of gas? Ran, runned. Have you ever ran out of gas? I've been really bad with grammar. I was thinking that, you know, I'm... Runned. Just I really need to. ED I really it. need to up my game on my vocabulary. Lately, you know... You've I've been faltering? I've been faltering. So I'm, I'm really thinking that I should up, up my game on my vocabulary, and I guess now you're saying my grammar. And also my gas tank management skills, which I think you're going to learn about here I think it's second. ran. I ran out of gas. Okay. Have you ever ran out of gas? Let us know in the comments, and l let us be vulnerable and share some stories here. Let me start off by saying, over the past two months, okay, I have come this close mm -hmm. to running out of gas twice. Okay. Twice. Uh, and you know, I will say, I've never ran out of gas or run out of gas. I've never lost all my gas without getting more gas. Run sounds better. Okay. Just so you know. I've never run out of gas. But like I said, I've come dangerously close in the past two months, and, it, and I'm blaming it on the L.A. traffic. After, after moving out here, it, here's the interesting... So you're not blaming it on being too smart. I, no, <laughs> I'm not. Unlike, okay. Here, here, All right. Here's the thing. I'm blindsided by my fuel tank being empty because since I've been in L.A., I never look down at the dashboard, at the instruments down there anymore. Here's the thing that I realized... When you're in, tr there's so much traffic here that your speed is dictated by traffic. You go with the flow of traffic True. at all times. True. So over time, there becomes less and less and ultimately zero need to look down at your speed. I've noticed that, you know what? In the past year, I've learned to not monitor my speed at all. You just go the speed of traffic. It's always dictated by that. But so, what about? So I never look down. Oil pressure and engine temperature and the. Oh, I, those are things that just happen to catch your eye when you're looking at your speed. No, first of all, in the fuel gauge, I never we look down share, intentionally. We share this car. Now, we we each we Link and I have one car between the two of us. It's, it's a business. It's vehicle. a business car because I don't have to commute. I just come into the backyard, right? Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. he has the car. And when we moved out, we each sold our second vehicle in order to save money and be more efficient. Yeah. So and each family everything. has a has a car, and then we share a car. And I drive it from my house to here every morning, and last night when I was driving home, all of a sudden, I looked down, and the fuel monitor, not the gauge, there's a gauge there that I never look at, but then there's a dinging sound that makes me look down, that's the only time I look down, and it says, the idiot ding, usually it says, like, 40 miles to low fuel, or 30 miles to low fuel, and then, you borrowed the car to go pick up the other car, or something, and it went from 35 miles low fuel, until... All of a sudden, I looked down last night, and it said zero miles, not to low fuel, to empty. Yeah, because I really, I really ride the so. <laughs> I was like, oh crap! And I'm like, I'm turning off the AC because I'm told that the AC burns gas. It does. And then I'm, I'm keeping the windows rolled up for aerodynamic optimus. So you're sweating like a pig <laughs> right. inside the car. And I was nervous, so I was sweating like a pig, and I was like, okay, what? I got to go downhill from here. So where's the nearest gas station? I didn't start to sputter. But I got into the gas station, and it all but was sputtering at that point. And I got gas, and that's the same thing that happened two months ago. I don't look down, I just look at the traffic to know everything I need to know, and then the dinging usually tells me I've got X number of miles, but then it said zero miles. Panic mode. But it led me to think 
I've never run out of gas. Well, I'll come close, but I'm not gonna go all well, the way. You're flirting with disaster and you're gonna run out of gas. Now, I have a couple of observations about this. First of all, every time I get into our shared vehicle and drive it, first of all, I have to move the seat back. Thanks a lot for that. Secondly, you're welcome. Secondly, it's always about to run out of gas. It, without fail, you're always about to run out of gas. Like, it, it seems like nine times out of 10, when I have to take control of the vehicle, which is not very often, we're almost out of well, gas. Well, then why don't you ever fill it up? Because I feel like you're the one who's responsible. You're the one who's running out of gas. Well, I think I've, I'm not running out of gas. I'm getting as close as can come. So actually, I'm just being very efficient. And here's a second observation, and this is serious. If you're out there listening, you need to pay attention to this too. Especially when you're in an urban area like Los Angeles, where a huge disaster could strike at any moment. We could have a catastrophic earthquake, and we got to get to the bug out location. Okay. You know, I've been watching Doomsday Preppers. I've heard. You got to have at least half a tank of gas in your vehicle at all times. You're flirting with disaster. Wait, not just I'm not talking about just the embarrassing inconvenience of running out of gas on the side of the road, you know, where there's barriers and you got no there's no shoulder like all the highways in Los Angeles and then you become that punk that's caused a traffic jam because you ran out of gas. You don't want to be that guy. But you know who you really don't want to be? You don't want to be the guy who's stuck in Los Angeles during the zombie apocalypse, and they just come to you and they eat you and your family. To me, that's that's better. To me, that's better than filling up twice as often. But here's the thing: if you do run out of gas, the thing that's dying not as, in the zombie apocalypse is better than filling up twice the, as often. Risking the chance of that is better than the guaranteed going to the gas station. You've got to treat often. your tank like it's half as big as it is. That low part of the, 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 the low half. I understand what you're saying. It's not even there. You're not hearing what I'm saying. It's not even there, friend. It's just the if, top half that if, you worry you know, about. If you, friend, if you would <laughs> fill up the tank half the time, then I'd be glad to do that. Okay, that's the deal. Compromise. Compromise. If you're, we're about to run out of gas, if it's below half and I'm driving, I'm filling it up. Okay. For your safety. Now, if you don't reciprocate, and that's a good word, I'm not doing it anymore. If I oh. do it once and then I get back in the car and it's but and you and you've gotten to the to the bad part of the tank, the low half. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with both those things. You doing it and then deciding not to do it anymore. Now, to illustrate my own hypocrisy, yeah, course, let this, me is, this is twelve years ago. I ran out of gas. I've actually run out of gas what? twice. Because this is okay, before twelve I, years ago. This is before I watched Doomsday Preppers and I was concerned about the apocalypse. I've never run out of gas. The You're first, the one who ran out of gas. The first time I ran out of gas, pretty uneventful. I sputtered into the stall. Sputtered into the a bathroom, a public restroom. I stuttered into the gas pump. Okay. So I ran. I ran out. It was in the dynasty, and it and it, and it was went and it came to a came to stop right at the gas pump. I stopped. I stopped. So it was. I stopped. I stopped. It didn't really sound like. That. Like a Model T. The second time I ran out of gas, and now this is absolutely amazing. I was with my. Uh, then girlfriend, soon to be wife. Okay, Jesse is her name, and we were driving in the Intrepid. Remember the Intrepid, Dodge Intrepid, nineteen ninety six. Yeah. I totaled it, looked, it at one it point. Like like the vehicular version of a squished frog. I thought it kind of seemed like a space vehicle with wheels slash space vehicle. Um, I was in the Intrepid. Jesse was in the passenger seat, and we were headed towards uh, my place in Raleigh. And as we got within. 300 yards of my apartment. Okay. We were going up a hill to an intersection. It started sputtering. And, and, and boom, it ran out of gas. It ran out of gas. And that was when I realized, first of all, I looked down and I was like, oh crap. You know, I'm with my... You're embarrassed. I'm with, no, I'm with my girlfriend and I'm thinking about, so this is the woman I'll marry. I'm definitely not looking at the speed, the speedometer, or anything. I'm just thinking about this woman in my car, you know? Uh, yeah. So I'm totally distracted. So we ran out of gas. At that moment, I realized that in front of me at this intersection is a tow truck. Directly in front of me and directly behind me is a cop. I get out of the car. I get the cop's attention. I'm like, I ran out of gas. He cuts his lights on, gets out of his car, stops traffic, goes to the tow truck, says, put this guy on here. The tow truck just, put, get the guy gets out, puts a hook on my car, tows me 300 yards for free to my house. That's serendipity. I ran out of gas sandwiched between an officer and a tow truck. And they just happened to be in the exact right position to be able to block traffic behind me and tow me from the front. But you were 300 yards from your house. I think you wasted 
a whole bunch of serendipity on something that really didn't uh, matter. No, I think it's even more serendipitous. No, but I, how much serendipity do because you have in your life, and how much did you waste he in would, that no, moment? No, because he would have charged me. He would have charged me. I mean, I was in he that intersection even, at Western Boulevard and Blue Ridge Road. Oh, uh, he didn't even charge you? No, he was like, sure, no problem, bud. Glad to be of service. And then you're like, can you just, can I just follow you around for the next... 48 hours because it's going to happen again. Well, from that from that, that point on, if I when I approach intersections, I always try to find the cop and the tow truck and try to get right in between them. Let us know your uh, empty tank stories in the comments below. And if they involve serendipity, uh, kudos. Keep your tank at least half full. You're going to thank me. When you're driving down the road and the zombies are clawing at your car and pushing on it, uh, 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 trying to eat your flesh, you're gonna thank me. But you're only gonna fill up our car if I fill it up, so you don't really care that much. My you're car's just, full. No, I'm taking our my car. car. Our car. I'm taking my car out. Okay, Rhett's abrupt exit. <laughs> okay. That was abrupt. See you tomorrow.